Good morning, folks. We've got updates on key items, cool space news, and a science slap to a group that really ought to know better, especially because they are from Princeton. Anyway, I'll get there, but we'll start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet with a black flash in front of the screen. Folks, this will happen almost every day for the next couple weeks. It's SDO eclipse season, and in 304 angstroms, we can see that behind those eclipses, the filaments are remaining active despite the lack of sunspots and flares. The solar wind stream peaked and sustained over 500 kilometers per second for an entire day, while the slow rise into it leaves Earth's magnetic field handling the enduring plasma pressure fairly well, it is also likely that those tiny CMEs were swept up into the coronal stream. The event is ending now, but there are some last small CMEs that probably won't arrive for a few more days. Note about the big earthquake yesterday. When I woke up, it was registered at 7.2. That's what came through our app as well. During the morning news, they upgraded it to 8.2 the single largest upgrade of a quake magnitude ever. But also, folks, there was no tsunami and many locals said they felt nothing. Was it really an 8.2? Anyway, there was a blot echo that preceded the event up there on the island chain, and of course, the coronal hole whose solar wind is at Earth right now set the earthquake watch the previous morning. End of the day, there were no deaths, and that is the top note about the quake. Folks, snow in the Brazilian mountains is not unheard of, but this is not the mountaintops, and this is not a light dusting. Global warming, pounding the crap out of the equator right now. On to some cool space news. Using ALMA, they were not only able to locate magnetic fields holding onto the galactic material, but they see it in 3D. They say local conditions strip part of the galaxy away, but it is now falling back to join its friends from the opposite side of our view. Also in this cool space imaging realm, the four planets of HR 8799 were first spotted two years ago like this, and now, using Keck's infrared planetary imager, they're clocking the spin of those planets. Not exactly sure what to do with this information, but it is surely a golf clap of astronomical science. Last three articles do come back to Earth, starting with a continued expose of those living in Earth's basement. To put it simply, there is expected to be more weight and microbial life living inside the crust than all the creatures on the surface and in the oceans combined. They out-eat the surface as well in terms of consumption mass. Yeah, it's real. Excellent paper here. Keeping up with Earth's rotation glitch tracking, they've jumped another day and well over 3 milliseconds fast now for their predicted fastest day of the year. If they don't wipe this data by tomorrow, it will be the longest they've let the anomaly run show up. And last but not least, this paper is making some headlines and will make more soon. They say the climate forcing we've seen recently can only be caused by humans and our pollution, putting a 1% chance of natural forcing being to blame. So I checked. Folks, they used CMIP6, but the irradiance only. No solar particles, no cosmic rays, and they did not factor in the weakening of Earth's magnetic field in that model at all either. I emailed these Princeton authors about their omissions. They omitted a response. We greatly appreciate your support. Hopefully they respond today. would love to hear about their process. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.